All right. Hello, and welcome to administering multi-cluster service meshes securely. I'm Eitan Yarmish, an architect at, at Solo.io. I'm Eric Murphy. I'm a field engineer also at Solo.io. So before we jump in, let's just quickly go over what we're going to discuss in this talk. First, we're going to review multi-cluster service mesh and how it has evolved. First, focusing on single cluster service mesh and jumping off from there. Next, we're going to discuss the limitations and security issues with the current approach. Third, we're going to explain how we at Solo.io solved those problems. And then fourth, we're going to give an example or demo of how to deploy securely using GitOps. So before we jump into multi-cluster service mesh, let's just quickly uh, take a, a look back at single cluster service mesh. So this is a very simple single cluster service mesh example. We have a couple of different workloads running in cluster, uh, as well as our service mesh. In this case, the service mesh is Istio, but that is not necessary for this. So as you can see, uh, all of the all of the workloads, including the Istio control plane are communicating directly with the Kubernetes API server. In the case of the control plane, it communicates with the API server to get uh, the endpoint information for all of the workloads, uh, as well as service info and other metadata about the cluster. Um, so let's just quickly review the single cluster scenario and why it ha what the benefits are and why it's more simplistic. So the control plane and, and the data plane both live on the same cluster. Uh, authentication with the API server is handled automatically by Kubernetes. So the service account tokens are generated and mounted automatically. And the tokens remain safely in Kubernetes. More on this later. Most likely no need to re revoke those. And lastly, configuration can be easily housed in a single repository, leading to simple, easy to understand GitOps workflows. Um, so now that we've quickly discussed a single cluster Istio scenario, let's evolve, let's jump that up to a multi-cluster scenario and begin to explain the complexities and security implications involved. So now, as you can see, we've taken our single cluster diagram and multiplied it by five. Now, in this scenario, all of the control planes still uh, need access to the cluster that they are running on. Um, but in order for a multi-cluster service mesh to be useful, the Istio control planes also need to be able to read and write to the other clusters. So what does that look like? Uh, for us. Well, we've quickly drawn up an example. So now we can see all of the Istio control planes have access to every other cluster's Kubernetes API server. So what does this mean in practice? Well, in practice, this means that every control plane needs to have uh, credentials to access those other clusters. So as we mentioned earlier, the, the Kubernetes credentials need to leave the Kubernetes, uh, the single cluster boundary. So multi-cluster service mesh. The control plane and the data plane are spread out across many clusters. Each control plane needs access to each other cluster. That means we have the, an order n squared connections, where n is the number of uh, clusters. Authentication is not handled automatically for our remote control planes. So service accounts must be cr created. Kube configs containing the service account token must be distributed to each cluster. Now these kube configs, which must leave cluster borders, give potentially dangerous levels of access to said cluster. If any kube config credential were to leak, replacing it and redistributing the credentials is a convoluted process. Keeping all of these kube credentials in sync across all the different clusters is very difficult and not easily done using GitOps. So, and on top of this, in deployments with many clusters, 
uh, potentially many control planes are performing IO on each API server, which can slow it down. So the approach that I just mentioned with uh, order n squared connections, that's one way of doing it. That's the, that's, that was the uh, Istio way of doing it um, beforehand, but a new way is starting to emerge, which we think is a lot better. And that's the external control plane. So in this scenario, Istio is running, or the service mesh is running on a management cluster and managing a bunch of clusters on its own. And in this way, we, there, uh, there doesn't need to be a control plane on each cluster that needs access to each and every other cluster. So there are of course downsides to this scenario, such as if the management cluster were to go down, then the control plane would also go down. So it is important to build in redundancy for the management cluster, but you also reduce the number of places that need the kube credentials, as well as reducing the load on the API server. So the external control plane. The control planes are now on a single cluster and the data planes are still spread out. Now, we like to call this the push model of configuration. There's one centralized control plane with access to all data plane clusters. So that's order N connections. And the centralized control plane will be pushing config out to the remote clusters. Each control plane will still need access to the API server of each node or remote cluster. And although the number of network edges has shrunk, the same problems from the previous model still exist, albeit on a, on a smaller scale. Still hard to distribute the credentials and the leaked credentials can give bad actors outsized power. So what are our concerns, our main concerns about administering multi-cluster Istio or service mesh securely? One, difficult to store and sync all of the kube credentials using tr traditional GitOps workflows. And two, Giving a cluster read-write access to many other clusters leaves a potentially large security threat. So how can we get around some of these issues? Well, the way that we've thought about it is something called a pull-based method of config. So if you notice in the previous diagram, all of the arrows were pointing out to the, to the remote clusters, whereas now all of the arrows are pointing in at the management cluster. So it's still an external control plane, but it's pull based this time. So this, so now all of the remote clusters are actually creating the connections to the management plane. So the management plane doesn't need to have access to any of the remote clusters. And neither does the service mesh running there. So what benefits does this bring us? Well, this pull model of configuration, as I mentioned, there's one centralized control plane which, need ac which needs access to zero data plane clusters. All the data plane clusters connect to the control plane cluster and receive updates that way. The config updates function similarly to the Envoy XDS protocol. For those familiar, and the, for those unfamiliar, we will go over that in a minute. And linked credentials no longer give the same direct control over the API server. Furthermore, no Kubernetes credentials need to be shared outside of the cluster borders. And since we are no longer distributing these credentials, the, the remote components we are distributing can be easily stored and distributed via GitOps. So how does this really work? Well, we took heavy inspiration from Envoy's XDS protocol and the Kubernetes bootstrap token, which I will explain now, um, but those links are available from the slide. The way that the XDS protocol works is essentially Envoy makes a connection to the control plane or the management server and says, hey, I want some config updates. And then the management server says, all right, great, I've got that for you. And so in that way, each remote instance, each Envoy, is responsible for creating the, the connection. And then the management server is responsible for updating Envoy with the config when necessary. 
And the Kubernetes bootstrap token is a way of verifying the identity of different callers. So more on that in a second. So how does it really work? Well, in this case, the server would live in is our management plane. That is the component living in the, in the management cluster and the agent. And the agent is the component that gets deployed to each remote cluster or each data plane cluster. So we start off with a CA or, or signing cert um, on the server and a server cert on both the agent and the server. And the server cert will be used to establish the initial TLS connection. In addition, we distribute a bootstrap token to both clusters. And this bootstrap token will be used in the initial request with the token so that the server knows to trust the agent. And then can, and then once it knows it can trust the agent, it will respond with its MTLS cert and it's with the identity. And this MTLS cert is how the server knows what data to send back to the agent. So once that identity has been uh, provided, then we can open our, uh, our config streams. So the first one we have is a remote resource stream. And this will stream the resources from the data plane clusters, from the agent to the server so that it can make decisions about the system. And then the second one will stream the mesh config or the config needed to run the data planes to the agent clusters. So can the pull model really solve all of our problems? Short answer, no. But it does alleviate the two main issues that we began to discuss a few slides back. The first being giving a cluster read-write access to many other clusters leaves a potentially large security threat. Well, since our control planes no longer need direct access to remote API servers, the Kubernetes credentials no longer need to leave cl cluster boundaries. This reduces the chance that a bad actor gets elevated access to the system and reduces the load on the API server by reducing the number of clients. The second, difficult to store and sync all these kube, creden kube credentials using GitOps workflows. Well, luckily, there's no longer any need to store or sync these kube credentials. Uh, on top of which, the, the components that do need to be synced, mainly the agent and the token, can easily be integrated with GitOps. See part two of the talk. So what were those question marks that we were talking about earlier? Well, it just so happens that we at Solo.io have created a product called GlueMesh, which can, which can handle this, but more on that later. For now, I'm going to kick it over to Eric. Thank you, Eitan. So next, I want to talk about how you can deploy GlueMesh securely across multiple clusters using GitOps and Argo CD. So I have a demo I want to show you today. And in that demo, I have two clusters running. I have a management cluster. And on that management cluster, I have Argo CD deployed. And I'm going to use Argo CD to deploy configuration from a Git repository and automate the deployment of the Glue Mesh management plane. On the remote cluster, I have a separate instance of Argo CD running, and I'm going to use configuration there to deploy the agent automatically. So there are multiple benefits here to this approach where you can take configuration as code, you can store everything in your Git repository, and you can have a repeatable deployment process for both the Glue Mesh management plane and the agent. And this allows you to automatically update your Glue Mesh deployments with that configuration with Argo CD. Additionally, if you need to spin up new clusters and deploy new meshes, you can do it in an automated way more quickly and more effectively. Additionally, in a disaster recovery scenario, you want to be able to replace your clusters and your meshes as quickly as possible. And you can do that with this approach, even including that management cluster. Okay, so now let's jump into the demo. So what I'm gonna show here in this demo is actually how to physically deploy Glue Mesh using Argo CD, okay? And so to do that, I have some configurations uh, checked into my Git repository. Everything is deployed from a Git repository using Argo CD. And in that Git repository, I have CRDs that are specific to Argo CD. And so this is an application CRD. 
And inside of that application CRD, you can actually define values for a Helm chart. So behind the scenes, Argo CD is actually using Helm to deploy the glue mesh management plane and the agent. So in this case, I'm using the glue mesh enterprise chart, right? And I'm setting a license key and some other values such as self sign equals false. That means I'm providing the certificates in advance of the installation. I'm not depending on glue mesh to generate certificates on its own. Okay. And then if I go over to this other application CRD, I can see the helm chart for deploying the agent. And so here the chart is enterprise agent and I'm giving it a server address for the management cluster. I'm giving it an authority for the certificates that are used and I'm giving it a cluster name, which is simply remote cluster. Okay. So now let me walk you through the steps for actually conducting the deployment with Argo CD. Okay. So first I'm going to switch my kubectl context over to the management cluster. Next, I'm going to create a new namespace for glue mesh on that management cluster. Next, I'm actually going to kick off the deployment of the glue mesh management plane using Argo CD. And I can do that by simply doing a kubectl apply on that application CRD. Okay, so that's done. So what I can do is go over here and log into the Argo CD deployment on my management cluster. And you can see how quickly that was actually deployed. Everything is synced and healthy already in a matter of seconds. And if I click in here, I can see everything that was deployed for the glue mesh management plane. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of different things deployed here, right? Everything is green, um, everything is deployed, everything is healthy, include all the pods for the dashboard, the enterprise networking, and so that all looks good. As you can imagine, you know, glue mesh, the management plane is, you know, a little bit complicated because it does manage multiple clusters or with multiple meshes. And so there are a lot of uh, capabilities built into it. Then if I step out here and look at the rest of my application deployment, I can see configurations for the glue mesh management plane. So here I can see that there is a uh, RIT certificate that is stored in a secret. I can see that there is a TLS certificate for securing connection between the remote cluster and the management cluster. There is a signing certificate also stored in the secret. And that allows the glue mesh management plane to generate new certificates that can be passed to remote clusters to establish an MTLS secure connection. Okay. Also, there is a token that is created and I provided this token in advance. So that token is deployed with the glue mesh agent and that is used for making that initial connection from the remote cluster to the management cluster as that was discussed previously. Uh, finally, I have a configuration called Kubernetes cluster and that simply defines the remote cluster that is uh, configured to be registered by the agent. And I'll walk through how that works. Okay. So let me go over here to my console and I'm actually going to kick off the mesh cuddle command. And so that will allow me to see what is currently um, running, what is currently registered um, in the glue mesh management plane. Okay. So as I mentioned before, there is a Kubernetes uh, cluster CRD. You can see that uh, the cluster is there, right? Uh, but if I go in here, there are no meshes that were discovered, right? And that is because the agent has not yet completed registration with the glue mesh management plane. Okay. And so that is going to be the next part of the demo. Okay. So let me go back over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my kubectl context to be for the remote cluster. I'm going to also create a glue mesh uh, namespace there. And I'm going to deploy that other application CRD specific to the glue mesh agent. Okay. So let me paste that in there. 
There we go. All right, so now let me go over and log into the other instance of Argo CD. This is not the same Argo CD. This is the one deployed on the remote cluster, okay? So I'm gonna click sign in here. And here you can see that um, everything that is needed for the glue mesh agent is deployed, right? So that also happened very quickly in a matter of seconds. You can see that there's um, enterprise agent pod that's running right here. So that is green, that is healthy. So everything looks good for the glue mesh agent deployment. Then if I go over here and look at the rest of my deployment, I can see the actual configurations that are residing in that Git repository deployed by glue mesh. Okay, so if you look here, um, there is a secret that is deployed with that RIT certificate, right? And there's also that identity token secret. So that is the same token that was deployed on the management cluster. And once again, that token is used to authenticate the remote cluster with the management cluster and establish that initial connection with the management plane for glue mesh, okay? And when that happens, it receives back an MTLS certificate and a new connection is established. So there is um, a fully secure connection for the glue mesh agent, okay? And one thing I want to call out here, you know, just for demo purposes, I'm putting the certificates um, into Git, you know, for the risk certificate. That is not the best practice. Instead, you could use um, remote secrets. You could integrate with HashiCorp Vault. You could integrate with your cloud provider with their certificate management uh, services. So once again, that's just for demo purposes. Okay. Um, and by the way, um, you know, all this is stored in, in the Git repository, as I mentioned. So if you go in here, you know, you can look and you can see, you know, these configurations for the, the glue mesh agent. You can see like the token, the token value right here, right? You can see the, um, the root TLS secret. You can see the CA cert right here, right? So all that is deployed using that, that GitOps approach, okay? Okay, so since we deployed that agent, uh, it should be registered. So let's go back and look at the glue mesh uh, console again. And you can see now that under meshes right here, I actually have a mesh that's registered, right? It's this Istio D, Istio system remote cluster right here, right? And the mesh health is green. And I can see that uh, there are some destinations that were automatically discovered on that remote cluster. Keep in mind, this glue mesh console is running on the management cluster. So if I go in here and look at the mesh details, I can see that there is a destination for the pet store application. I deployed that pet store application in advance of this demo. Uh, it is part of that service mesh uh, offered by Istio on that cluster. Uh, the sidecars were automatically ingest, injected into the pods. And so that was um, how the pet store was automatically discovered uh, by Glue Mesh. Okay. So that wraps up the demo. So let me go back to the slides and just finish up here. So Glue Mesh is a really awesome uh, product for providing that multi cluster, multi mesh management, right? But Solo offers other products that integrate with Kubernetes, integrate with Service Mesh. So we actually have an API gateway product called Glue Edge that offers integrations with Istio. We also have something called the Glue Portal. So that provides a developer portal, a user interface, an API specification discovery that integrates with Glue Edge and also Istio Ingress. And finally, we offer something called um, WebAssembly Hub. So that is a place where you can build WebAssembly extensions for the Envoy proxy. You can publish them. You can deploy them. It's compatible both with Istio and Glue Edge. So with that, I thank you for watching today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.